All right, what's going on, y'all? This is Box Wave. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just finished watching the Manny Pacquiao fight with Chris Algieri. And, um, I mean, this is why I dislike fights like this. Because on paper, Manny Pacquiao destroys this kid. Because this kid hasn't... He's still developing as a fighter. Okay? Um, he won against Ruzan Provotnikov. But uh, that fight could have gone either way. All right, and it, it was a tough fight, and there's still a lot of other fighters at 140, and I feel like Algeria he's still in development mode. He shouldn't have been thrown in there with Manny Pacquiao, an elite fighter, an all-time great. Okay, he's an all-time great. That's still, whether or not you think he's in his prime, he's still fighting on a high level. He still beat Tim Bradley, who was undefeated earlier this year. Okay, so. Uh, this, fights like this should not happen because I think it was the uh, was it the fifth round. The fifth round is where Algeria actually it was a decent round for Algeria. I still gave the round to Pacquiao, but the fifth round was a decent round. It was that one, um, I believe it was a a right hand that Algeria landed that was that was a pretty good right hand that kind of it was similar to the the same punch that the Marquez uh, Marquez dropped Manny Pacquiao with. And what if that one punch knocked Manny Pacquiao out? Just like that. You know, we would have never known that Manny Pacquiao was going to shut this kid out or knock him down six times in a fight. You know, this is the risk you take when you take a punch. A easy. You have so many fighters at 147 to fight. And I, it's not, I'm not sitting here saying that Pacquiao's ducking anyone because I don't think Manny Pacquiao's afraid of anyone. But Bob Arum... These guys, let's get back to business here. There's a lot of fighters at 147. Okay, if you want to fight someone at 140, Danny Garcia might be moving up to 140. Fight him. And even him, I don't think he stands a chance against Manny Pacquiao. Okay? There's a lot of fighters at 147. That is like the elite division in boxing. Plenty of fights to be made there. Plenty of fights. All right? This is not one of them. Okay, now, as far as the fight... They were showing way too much respect to each other. Okay, the touching gloves. These guys touched gloves more than a recent Shea Mosley fight. Okay, these guys were in love with each other in there. These guys, I'm watching a fight and I'm thinking of Michael Jackson, remember the time in the back of my head. That's playing in the back of my head while I'm watching this fight. Because these guys are like best friends. You know, I think Manny Pacquiao, if he really wanted to, he could have annihilated this kid. Even worse than what he did. It's six knockdowns. It was like four of them. That two of them were slips, but Pacquiao really. I think out of all of the knockdowns, the the one that really hurt was that one in the ninth round, I believe, where he dropped and fell on his back. That was that was a good knockdown. Okay, but other than that, you know, Algeria's a tough crit kid. I give him a lot of credit, but he didn't belong in there. You can tell from the first round he did not belong in there. You know, he was in a different league. And I said this in my videos. Both of the videos that I met, I said this in my videos, man. Um, I was a little nervous, but more nervous because uh, what it, what can happen if, what would happen if Pacquiao lost his fight? You know, what would this do for his legacy? That's what I was more nervous about, if anything. Because this is a fight against someone that this would have been a major upset. You know, he's not fighting one of the top guys in his division. You know, and I know Chris Algieri is still bigger than Manny Pacquiao, but 140, I'm talking about a level of competition. It's different from 140 and 147. It's different. But, um, you know, I, I, I just believe Manny Pacquiao, you know, I was watching a fight and, you know, Manny Pacquiao seemed to be taking it easy on him at points. I mean, maybe Chris Algeria was saying that, you know, Pacquiao was being cautious. And, and there's a possibility that Pacquiao might have just been being cautious, you know. Um, he was fighting a smart fight. But um, there was times where I'm like, all right, come on, man. Let's, let's get this kid out of here, man. It's, I thought he was going to win by... I thought he would win. Pacquiao would win by decision anyway. Because I thought Jerry was very, uh, you know, he seems to be a tough kid, you know. I mean, getting that pound that he got from Provotnikov, he seems to be very durable. So I figured that even if he gets, like, beat up bad, he would still survive the rest of the fight because he has good legs. But, um, 
I think I really feel like Pacquiao could have finished the fight off. All right. Um, so what happens from here? You know, um, everybody obviously wants the Mayweather fight. You know, everyone wants that fight. Uh, there's plenty of fights that would be, would be made that that could be made. That's good. You got uh, Marcos Maidana out there. All right. That's been talking about fighting Pacquiao. Amir Khan. That would be a good fight. You know, there's some history with that. They used to be sparring partners. Amir Khan used to be trained on the Freddie Roach. So that would be good. Um, oh, Jesse Vargas. I already made a separate video, video for that. Please, let's not see that fight. Please. All right, that fight is even worse than this because um, I think Chris Algieri is a way better opponent than Jesse Vargas would be. All right. Um, you got a lot of people. You got, you know, you got Keith Thurman's. You got the winner of... You know Alexander and Khan. You got you got Sean Porter still out there. Okay, there's a lot of fighters at 147. It's too many of them. Okay, Danny if Danny Garcia decides to come up to 147, you can make that fight. You know, it's too many fights that could be made if the Mayweather fight doesn't happen. All right, but I'm very interested. I'm back to and there was a point where I want to say like around like 09 2010. I thought that Pacquiao might have been the only one that could beat Pitt Mayweather. I was kind of leaning towards Pacquiao to winning. Then maybe the last few years, I was kind of leaning towards Floyd winning. I'm like, you know, I think Floyd could beat Pacquiao at this stage. I think Pacquiao, once the knockout stopped happening, I started believing that Floyd would be able to beat him. Now, I'm like a little bit stuck in between now on who I would think would win that fight, you know. Um, so... The fight needs to happen, man, because... All right, I'm, I'm not going to talk on that, all right? Let me, let me go back to the fight, because I said I was never going to talk on that stuff again. Um, so anyway, Algieri, I still think he's a top fighter at 140. I think he's one of the top fighters. I think he has a good chance against Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner, uh, Lucas Matisse. I think he has a good chance of beating some of those guys, okay? Um, but... Uh, at 147, I'm not really sure if he can compete with the guys at 147, the top 10 guys, you know, even the top 20 guys at 147 is a whole different ball game. But I think he could compete well against the top fighters at 140. You know, I believe he still keeps his title here, uh, um, his uh, WBO title. Okay, so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens to him. The kid had a long future. I don't think losing to Manny Pacquiao does anything bad for his career. But as far as Manny Pacquiao, this doesn't really do anything for his career, you know, because a lot of people knew that he was going to destroy Chris Algieri, especially on paper. As far as the record and experience, it's just the power, the speed. Pacquiao had almost every advantage. And then one thing I didn't even know that I didn't bring up in the prediction videos were that uh, was that Manny Pacquiao had longer arm length. All right. I didn't know. I just assume that Chris Algieri had the reach advantage because, you know, Pacquiao's not really known for having long arms and he's very short. He's only 5'6". But um, you can tell the difference. It, it, it really wasn't hard for Manny Pacquiao to find his range in that fight. You can tell even in the first round that Pacquiao had the speed and he didn't have problems with finding the distance. There was some point where I thought Algeria got started to get a little comfortable in there. It was one round in there that was like, all right, Algeria's starting to find his legs, you know, find the range a little bit, but it was, it was like short-lived, you know, it was just, Algeria just didn't stand a chance and he never looked comfortable in there. I think Algeria, uh, Pacquiao's speed and everything was just too much for him. And that's that. It's nothing really much to say, you know. As far as the card overall, you know, I wasn't really impressed with Zeus Shaming's uh, performance. He should have put that uh, mini Manny guy away. Um, I guess the only other fight, the 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 other best fight was the uh, the first fight, the Vargas and uh, the Demarco fight. It wasn't a great fight, but it was you know it was an okay fight. Uh, Lomachenko hurt his hand, so he had to keep fighting with his right hand halfway through the fight. And um, that was that. So uh, be on the lookout for other videos. This is my official post-fight video for the Manny Pacquiao-Chris Algieri fight. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.